We're already gearing back to back to school, and now we're here at Peace Lutheran Church and School talking with teacher Megan Willemson. And Megan, you teach kindergarten and preschool? Just kindergarten. Okay, so what can parents expect? Because now kindergarten is a full day. Yep. So how can they prep their child when it comes to going to a full day of school? I think really it's important that they get them to bed early. That mm -hmm. is something that's really, really important, especially coming off of summer. So I always tell parents that week before school starts, get them into bed early and wake them up early too. That's almost harder than going to bed. It's the waking up yes. part. And that would be really hard on the first week of school. So get them to bed early, wake them up early that week before, and get them into a routine of like a really good breakfast because they come to school sometimes with just a Pop-Tart or a piece of toast and it's a long time before snack or yeah. lunch, so they need a good breakfast too. And they've also got to be ready to do a full day of learning yes. and not necessarily taking the naps that they might take midday. So is there anything that you give advice for that they should arm their children with any type of supplies or absolutely I mean like in the beginning of the school year we always have a huge list of supplies that they need to bring in I ask parents to bring it in before the first day of school just so the first day of school is so rushed with the kids coming in and the parents with questions you don't want to yeah. be also tugging around 20 bags of right. wipes and the Kleenex so bringing that in early um, but yeah. again that sleep is just super duper important and you talk about wipes you yes. know, is there anything on your back to school list that you as a teacher think, okay, parents, do not skimp out on this this one supply? Wipes. <laughs> so it wipes, is wipes. wipes. That's why we you mentioned down, it. Yes. In kindergarten, we wipe down everything because they're sneezing and coughing over literally everything and germs travel so fast. I'm a little germaphobe, so I wipe everything it's probably constantly. A good thing. Yeah. yeah. In, in this class, yes. Yeah. So I wipe down everything. So making sure those wipes come in is really, really important, and the Kleenex, obviously. Yeah. When it comes to this full day, you know, we were just talking about how you and I have not had, you know, we weren't a part no. of the kindergarten that was full day. <laughs> um, what do you tell parents about separation anxiety when it comes to them, and what should they tell their students? That's, that's a really big thing for kindergarten. So I always tell parents, do a really memorable thing before they walk into class and then leave quickly. And I know that sounds really harsh, but... <laughs> It's so hard if they have anxiety or if you have anxiety to kind of stick around and parents tend to kind of, okay, he's in the classroom, I'm going to kind of watch, make sure he's sitting by his best friend or if they're crying. So the, really the best thing is to tell them they're going to have a great day, mm -hmm. that you will come back, that you will come back to get them or you will meet them at that bus stop and that they're going to have so much fun and you can't wait to see them and yeah. leave on a positive note and then leave. <laughs> what about those notes in the classroom? I used to, or the notes in the lunchbox. Are those a good thing or are those a little bit painful? <laughs> those, no. And those kids look for them and what's, you know, some kids will have them and some kids don't. And the kids that don't kind of flip over their napkin a little bit looking for their note and it is kind of sad to see. So leave them a little note. Something super quick. Just have a great day or I love you. Mm -hmm. Super quick and that kind of makes them really happy. That's midday when they see that and that kind of brings yeah. their spirit back up if they need it. And it doesn't have to be every day. But no. once in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I read it to them. I go around the lunchroom, you know, with them, and I read those notes to them. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. When it comes to curriculum, yes. what are the kind of things? I heard a rumor that kindergartners should know their letters before they get to class. So what should they know, and what's not so important? I mean, knowing their letters is important, mm -hmm. um, but I do still do like a letter of the week with them. So that's not something, if they don't know a couple of those letters, that's not something to stress about. But of okay. course, knowing at least half is what I say is really important so that they're not so overwhelmed when they start saying, oh, we're not just doing the letters, now we're doing words. So knowing about half of the letters is really good and their sounds, of course, is really okay. good too. Yeah, and what can they expect, what can parents expect that they're going to know coming out of kindergarten? They should be able to read short stories. Wow. They should be able to write two sentences, add, subtract, um, do their colors, their shapes, patterns, doing science. We have a whole new science unit actually this year, so doing science experiments and going through that process is a lot. Adding and subtracting yes. coming out of kindergarten. <laughs> That's amazing because I remember coming out of kindergarten and we played house a lot still. Yes. We played with blocks. I definitely didn't know how to add and subtract. It's 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 a lot now. Wow. Lot. Yeah. But they're so excited for that and that's not even something we do till about February. So we do a lot with numbers beforehand to prep them. So they're yeah. always so excited like when is when is addition coming? When am I going <laughs> to add? I'm, I'm done looking at the numbers. So. Yeah, they're done coloring yeah. in the numbers <laughs> and they're ready to go. They're Absolutely. ready to do yeah. math. That's amazing. That is good, yes. Is there something that you really look forward to every year as a teacher? 
I just love having them in the room and just starting a brand new year and they're so excited. That's what's so great about kindergarten to me is they're so excited to learn. They're so excited to be here and that excitement usually carries out throughout the whole year. So it's a really good grade to teach. <laughs> so we just talked about lunches. Yes. Let's talk about allergies because yes. that's got to be a huge concern in a school environment. It is and they're much more uh, big nowadays. I feel like yeah. we have so many allergies all the time. So I always have parents give me a list what your child is allergic to. I have a huge list usually sitting in my desk. The school is peanut, tree nut free all around oh, wow. in every okay. classroom, the lunchroom, everywhere. So that's something that parents have to be aware of that they can't bring peanut butter and jelly and, and any kind of snack that has peanuts in it. Um, birthday treats are always an issue, so we don't do that. <laughs> we don't get to have the cupcakes in my classroom because right. there's just too many allergies to too many uh, of the ingredients. Yeah, because you have to be worried about what's coming in, yes. not just what other kids are eating, Absolutely. but what they're sharing with the rest of the class. And they do share a lot in kindergarten, so you really have to be aware. I go through all their lunches every day once mm -hmm. they go to lunch and just to make sure because I mean some kids after Halloween you see the Reese cups in there because they forgot and you just have to watch for that. Oh my gosh that's just an added task <laughs> for a teacher to do. It is. I mean bless you teachers <laughs> for going through all of that <laughs> and I would love to talk about the school itself. Okay. Um, so you know people might driving by just think it's just a church but there's a whole school here and there it's is. it's pretty big. We are a pretty big school. Yeah so what kind of grades are here? So we start all the way with two-year-olds. We have a parent talk class um, called Panther Club. So those are our two-year-olds with the parents that come. And then we have three-year-old classes that are two days a week. And then we have preschool. And I think it's four days or three days. Um, and then we're K through eight. So we go all the way up through junior high. Wow, and there has to be a huge benefit to going to school here. There is, obviously they get to learn about Jesus all the time. And I think that's so, so important. We do chapel once a week and wow. the preschoolers go into chapel, I think every day, you know, to learn about Jesus too. So that's super important. That's a great benefit to coming here. Yeah, and it seems like a very nice community. Driving by, the kids are always outside. You always see them around. Absolutely. And you see people coming on the weekends to play soccer and be on the playground. So it yes. seems like it's a really good neighborhood community school. It is. We're very close. We have one teacher per grade. So all of these kids kind of move together as a family as they go through the school. And it's so nice. All the parents are so connected with each other. They do extracurricular activities together. They do play dates together. I mean, it's just a really big family. Well, and if there's anybody that's watching and wants to get more information about the school, where can they go? They can go to pshelby.org and find out more information and our phone number's on that site and we're always accepting um, new enrollees. Megan, thank you so much you. and good luck this year thank with school. Thank you. Thank you so much. What are you doing this summer? Want to go on an adventure? Learn something new? How about change the world? You can with the summer reading program at the Shelby Township Library. There are programs for kids, teens, and adults. You can stick to the classics or try something new. Starting Saturday, June 16th, you can grab a reading log and be entered to win weekly prizes. It all starts with a kickoff event at 1.30 in the Senior Citizens Park, right behind the library. Join us for Drums Alive, a combination of rhythmic movements and drumming with music, exercise balls, and drumsticks. Also, check out events for all ages every Wednesday during the summer, like a magic workshop for teens. Or, learn from a local rosebud, the child of a real-life Rosie the Riveter. For more information, visit us at the Shelby Township Library Facebook page, or check out our website at www.shelbytwplib.org. Most people don't know that the Nature Center has classes for homeschool students that start in the fall and go throughout the school year. Our Tyler Smith shows us how these monthly classes give students a look at the natural surroundings and peek at some critters. Tyler? The Burgess Shadbush Nature Center is more than a building for sightseers and nature enthusiasts. It is an educational asset. With the Nature Center's homeschool program starting every first Wednesday in the month of September to May, the homeschool program provides unique courses that fulfills the STEM curriculum for homeschool students. The focus of our homeschool programs targets students ages four and up, and it's basically we provide STEM-based programs once a month, typically on the first Wednesday of the month from September through May, and they offer STEM-based opportunities and outdoor education for those who are homeschool students. 
um, and that wouldn't normally get that opportunity. To have a different perspective, to have a different lab experience, we can offer that to students here at the Nature Center. Just as Ms. Burgess, our founder, she was an educator and she was very, you know, much a nature enthusiast. It's nice to be able to carry on her legacy to homeschool students through our Nature Tale programs and other programs that we offer to students around the area. For those who like the creepy crawlies, September 5th marks the first class of the program. Starting at 1.30 p.m., students will learn about the world of insects that you may find around your home. From insects that can hop, jump, flutter, and skitter, your student will know every kind of insect in the animal kingdom. As the hot summer days fade away, Holland Ponds is teeming with life. On October 3rd, the hike to Holland Ponds moves out at 1.30 p.m. Your student will be learning about various forms of wildlife and ecosystems while enjoying the beauty of the outdoors. Homeschool programs are available for any child ages four and up. These classes are scheduled at 1.30 p.m. on the first Wednesday of each month from September through May. But occasional date variations may occur due to holidays or other Nature Center programs. It is $3 per participating child with pre-registration encouraged. Do not wait a second. Call now at 586-323-2478 or register online at webtrack.shelby.org. Just the mention of snakes can make someone's skin crawl, but there's some new additions at the Nature Center that could actually be kind of cute. Let's send it over to Megan English at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. My name is Megan English. I am the naturalist here at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. And today we are going to be talking about garter snakes. So some of you may have seen our fairly recent uh, Facebook post here about our garter snake, Silk, who just had babies. She actually had 13 of them. I know Facebook said eight, but we, we pulled them out of her tank because you have to separate them. Um, we pulled them out of their tank and we actually found 13 of them, so it was very exciting. And they are, I've got some of them right here. There's about four in this tank. Garter snakes are really awesome snakes in Michigan because first of all, they're pretty much our most common snake. Most people know them as gardener snakes, um, but their true name is a garter snake. And people call them gardener snakes because they're commonly found in gardens. So, you know, slip of the tongue. But um, these guys are pretty special because they give live birth. Most snakes give birth by laying eggs. Uh, garter snakes give birth to live young. So it, they're actually, it's a pseudo live birth. It's called ovoviviparous, which is quite a mouthful. But so they give birth to live, live babies instead of eggs, just kind of like we do, um, which is super cool. They're also very social, which means that they usually live together in groups of five to sometimes even in the hundreds and thousands. In Canada, there is a, um, in Canada, there is a system of caves uh, that is a common hibernation point for all of the snakes that live in that area. So there are thousands of snakes every year that come together just for the winter, just to all overwinter in the same cave. So it's like basically that scene in uh, Indiana Jones where he is walking in that room and there's snakes all over the floor. That's what this cave looks like almost all the time. Super interesting. I really want to go there. But um, so we're kind of like that at the Nature Center right now. So garter snakes are pretty harmless. There's not a whole lot about them that's super scary. They're not aggressive. They're great to have in your garden. They eat pests, they eat earthworms. Um, they'll eat mice that could be eating if you grow vegetables that are be damaging your vegetables. If they're big enough, they'll eat baby bunnies that will eventually be grow to be in bigger vegetable pests. 